just a week and a half ago, Saturday night, July the 20th, one of the biggest upsets in the history of sports, one of the biggest sports betting upsets ever, almost took place when South Sudan, a 43.5 point underdog, had the final shot to win against Team USA. They came up a bit short, but they obviously covered easily. Now the point spread is 14 points less. So the question becomes, is there value now with USA? Or is there still value with the South Sudan team who only lost by one and is getting 29.5 points? I've got the answer for you. I've got a full breakdown of Team USA versus South Sudan, your Wednesday afternoon Olympic men's basketball game, and a free play for you coming up in just a moment. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV. And hey, if you enjoyed my NBA playoff previews, I did a video of every playoff game every day, then give this video a quick thumbs up because if I get enough likes, enough comments, enough views, I might very well break down all the Team USA basketball games the rest of the Olympics here for you free on Wager Talk TV. You know, I wasn't sure how much I would follow the Olympics. I'm busy handicapping baseball each and every day. And by the way, if you want my baseball best bets for tonight, they're on my page right now with a bonus free play for baseball, Steve Merrill. WagerTalk.com. And of course, college football right around the corner. The NFL starts this Thursday night, August 1st, with the preseason. But we also find value in the Olympics. And I do follow basketball extremely closely as both a fan, as a U.S. rooter, as a member of this nation, and also just as a fan of sports and sports betting. And look, as a 43.5 point dog, it was impressive what South Sudan did. So let's dig into that box score a little bit closer and see if it was misleading. And on the surface, I think it somewhat was. First of all, I always talk about three-point extremes. Well, the U.S. does take a lot of threes. In fact, their 26-point win against Serbia in the first Olympic game um, on Sunday night was basically because of three-point margin. In fact, the U.S. was plus 27 from three, and they only won by 26. But with the international rules, the bigger lane, uh, more defense allowed. Keep in mind, in the NBA, you have a three-second rule, and the defender also, not just the offensive player, but the defender as well, means they're going to have to score from the outside. So I do think the U.S. will have the three-point edge in all games going forward. But guess what game they did not have the three-point edge? And that was the South Sudan game a week and a half ago. In fact, the USA was minus 21 points from three-point range, and they still won by one. Two ways to look at this. Maybe South Sudan can have an edge again, but I don't think so. I think the other way to look at this is that the U.S. had a bad game. They overlooked a huge underdog. And the fact that South Sudan went out and beat Puerto Rico as an underdog in Game 1 the other night in the Olympics by 11 as a two-point dog means the U.S. will not overlook this game. My favorite angle in all of sports betting, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, any sport, team handball, you name it, is to play the better team when focused. I love playing favorites when focused, especially when we get them at a discounted price. Now, you can make an argument that 43.5 was not the correct point spread. I would agree with you. But nonetheless, this line is now 14 points lower. The consensus line on the Wager Talk Live odd screen is 29.5. This is a 14-point difference from just a week and a half ago. And yes, that was probably a bad number. But keep in mind, it was also an exhibition game, which did not matter. The USA was working numerous guys into the lineup. Now they need to win. And Steve Kerr showed this as the head coach on Sunday night. Jason Tatum, three years in a row, first team All-NBA player, did not even play in the game against Serbia. Now, I do expect him to play more. And by the way, a little bonus play for you. Tatum props to the over if you can find them. I checked DraftKings. They got about half the U.S. guys listed, half the uh, South Sudan guys listed. I do not say Jason Tatum listed yet because he did not play Sunday. Kerr said he will play more. I expect him to play a lot more here, especially since he did not get a chance on Sunday. So I do like Jason Tatum props over scoring props, anything else he can find, because I think he will get some minutes. As far as the other players, it's always tricky, because Kerr said with a 40-minute game, instead of a 48-minute NBA game, this is a 40-minute game just like college would be, he says you basically cannot get more than 10 guys in. So look for one or two of the 12 players to not play on a given night. The fact that Tatum sat I think he plays more in this game. And if we look back at that game on July 20th, Tatum played fairly well. He actually had eight shot attempts and got some good minutes against South Sudan. So I think he will once again. Another thing I want to point out, Kevin Durant was huge coming off the bench against Serbia. Um, He was eight for nine shooting after being injured this past year. He did not play in the exhibition game against South Sudan. That's another huge factor to point out. We're getting a 14-point discount on the point spread, and now we're getting Durant in the lineup. And most importantly, we're getting the focus. This is pool play. The U.S. is going to advance. They win this game. The game against Puerto Rico on Saturday will be pretty meaningless. 
and it is a random draw for the eight teams in the elimination knockout round. However, the top two finishers from the all three groups, there's three groups of four, 12 teams overall, the top two finishers overall cannot play head-to-head in the first game. And that's going to probably be France or Canada will be the other top finisher with the USA. So the USA does have incentive, once again, to be one of the top two finishers of all the groups to avoid either Canada or France, which I think are probably the two other teams to beat. Hey, look, the U.S. might not win the Olympics. I think this is wide open. I think France is going to have a good shot in their strong home court, 30,000 fans. And I don't trust Steve Kerr, to be honest, as a head coach. I think he's vastly overrated. But in this situation, it's lay it if you're going to play it with the USA, a focus spot by far the superior team. Look, South Sudan has some potential NBA talent. They've got a guy that's going to Duke. They've got some talent. And by the way, Luel Deng, former Chicago Bull, he's the guy that's making this happen. It really is a cool story. Take a chance. Do some research. Read up on it. South Sudan is one of the newest countries in the world. 2011, they split off for Sudan. But just like their former nation, Sudan, it is a war-torn, civil war nation, uh, poverty struck in. This is cool. It's a nice story. But in this case, I think they're up against it. Uh, USA gets their revenge. You know, normally we don't say it's a revenge game when a team won, but they were shot away from losing. This is a revenge spot for the USA. And keep in mind, the 26-point win against Serbia, that was the norm. They were only a 12.5 point favorite. They are only up by five after the first quarter, only up at nine by the half. They pulled away in the second half, and they can't help but pull away. This is like a college football game. I love laying big numbers early in college football because the second team is often better than the first team when you have an SEC team against a MAC opponent, for example. That's the case here. The U.S. cannot help but run the score up. And oh, by the way, what's the tie-breaking differential? The first of many tie-breakers, if they do try to get that top two seed, it's point margin, point differential rather. Uh, So winning by margin here does matter. Puerto Rico might be a letdown on Saturday. That's the game that won't matter. This game does matter tonight on Wednesday. Take a look at USA minus the 29 and a half. And I think it'll be a, a nice cover for you. A rare Olympic point spread play for me here on Wager Talk TV. Once again, baseball best bets each and every day, including tonight's top plays and a bonus free play for baseball on my page right now. And while you're there, check out the football early bird specials. Preseason starts this Thursday night, August the 1st. And my NFL fade the public video, my college bas- football, <laughs> basketball, college football top 25 right around the corner in the next month. So be sure you click subscribe and you hit the bell for instant alerts. So you never miss those football videos. And you also don't miss any more of these Olympic basketball videos. I wasn't planning on doing one, but I like the spot for the USA. I wanted to give everybody that free play. I'd call it a best bet. I think it's worth playing. wanted to give it to you free here on Wager Talk TV as a thank you for all of you that watched uh, the NBA playoff videos each and every day and been watching my free play baseball videos. Don't forget about those. So click subscribe. Click the bell for instant alerts. Thumbs up if you want to see more of these. And comment below. Let me know if you want to see more of these Olympic videos. And I'll keep them coming. I read all the comments. And I reply back. You can follow me on well at Steve Merrill on X. Follow me on Twitter X at Steve Merrill. Two R's, one L at Steve Merrill. And stay tuned for some more great content coming up for you free right here on Wager Talk TV.